will ask you some few basic questions. How can you identify a process uniquely on a particular system? On a particular system, I have this is my system. On a particular system, there can be a lot of processes which are running. How can you identify a process uniquely? Okay, correct. By using what you can identify? In one process, there can be a lot of threads. What by using what can I can I identify you uniquely? Tell me in the whole class. By using what can I identify? By using name. No name can be dupli duplicate. There can be two rows in this class. By using ID. Now tell me. By using what can I identify a process uniquely? Process ID. By using a process ID, I can identify a process uniquely on this machine, right? But there can be a lot of process. Each process will be a unique ID, right? Okay. Then, in one process, there can be multiple threads running. By using what can I identify a thread uniquely inside a process? What number? Okay, this one solution. Correct. Threads also will have ID allocated by operating system. By using thread ID, I can identify, right? Or also there is another alternative. By assigning a logical number, there is a way. Operating system provides a way so that through program, you can assign a number to a thread, right? By writing a simple program, you can as well bind a sock, bind a port to a thread, right? By using port number also, you will be able to identify a thread uniquely on a single machine. I will show you how to bind a port number to a thread through a program. That, that facility is provided by operating system. Operating system will allow us to bind a port number to a thread. Right. Okay. We understood that a thread can be identified uniquely by using a port number. Okay. Fine. Now, that is for communication again. A thread can be identified by using thread ID also for communication purposes. If you want to identify thread uniquely, you can do it by using a port number. Right. Then now, coming to the network, on a single machine, you can identify thread uniquely by thread ID. And tell me, on the network, how can you identify my machine uniquely? By using IP address. Now tell me, how can you identify thread uniquely on the whole network? By using a combination of IP and port, you can identify thread uniquely. So, combination of thread and port, sorry, combination of IP and port is nothing but a logical term we use called a socket. Okay, so through program, socket is nothing like physical, it is just a logical term being used for a combination of port number and IP, logical term. Okay. Then, what is the socket used for? If I create a socket with a combination of IP and port, I can identify thread uniquely on the whole network. So, socket can be used for communication purposes. If one thread on one machine wants to send a message to another thread on another machine, we can use sockets. Right? So, suppose if I have two machines on the network, suppose if I have two machines on the network, This machine will be having one thread. This is, let's assume that this is one thread being, I just represented it like this, a thread listening on a port. A port can be represented like this, right? This can be called a socket. And now, uh, another program, this is a client program. Any uh, on any other machine. Here also, this client can also have a thread. We can assign a port number to this thread also. Right? Port number and IP combination is a thing but socket, right? So now when these two ports are there, what you can do is you can establish a channel between these two ports. 
if you want to communicate what you can do is you can establish a communication channel this is nothing but a communication channel you can assume by using socket what you can do is through programming by using tcp ip or udp you can establish a communication channel between the two ports right now tell me can this socket be called as the end point of communications so to define a socket very clearly i'll define socket is nothing but a combination of ip and port and also it is an end point of communication a socket is a logical term which is used to group ip and port and it acts as an end point of communication by using sockets what we can do we can establish a communication channel between two ports two sockets right through programming any doubts <coughs> okay and there are two types of sockets one is a socket if a communication has to happen see if two person wants to communicate over a mobile phone or any phone one one person has to make a phone call other person has to lift it right so similarly if two threads want to communicate with each other one thread should be listening and one thread should initiate the communication right so if you if you want to make your thread to listen on a particular port what you can do is you can use a socket you can use a socket called server socket there are two types of sockets server sockets server socket is a socket which will be generally present on server side it is a socket by using which you can make your thread to listen on a port and on the client side generally what we use is a socket so there are two types socket and client and server socket any doubt still now what is the purpose of server socket for listening what is the purpose of socket for a, for initiating the connection right okay now i'll go to the program once so the concepts are clear i'll go to the programming and i'll show you how to assign a unique how to assign a socket to a thread how to bind a socket to a thread okay any doubt in the concept what is the port and what is socket these are all logical terms there is nothing like physical port or physical socket logical terms okay now i'll go to the programming now i'll go, i'll write uh, i'm creating a new package com.exchanger here i'm going to create a new class server now i'll take a main method on server side what type of socket should i create tell me server socket new server socket i'm going to create server socket see server socket there are various constructors i told you should bind a port number to a socket server socket is having a constructor is which is taking int we can pass one number to it that is nothing but the port number and what is port number port number is any number between 1 to 65535 65535 do you think uh, do, did you is, do you know what is this number 2 power 2 power 16 minus 1 Two point two point two point sixteen minus one. Two point thirty two minus one. Make what up? One two six five five two five. And the port numbers from one to one zero two four are reserved. Two point thirty nine. So port numbers one to one zero two four are reserved for standard applications like HTTP, FTP, Telnet, etc. Tell me what is the port for HTTP? FTP? No idea. Get idea. Twenty <laughs> one. Oh. Like that for standard applications, one to one zero two four are being used. So we should you we should not use the port name. Must be one zero one to one zero two four. We should we can use any number three after one zero two four to this one. But on your system, there might be some ports which are already being blocked or used by some other applications. Like if you have installed. 
Oracle server on your machine. By default, Oracle will take 8080. Right? So you should use a port which is not being used by any application on your machine. So if you want to find a port, you can ask your net, uh, network administrator or go to command prompt and type netstat a. You'll get all the ports which are being used. Okay? So somehow what I mean is I want you to use a port number which is not being used. So server socket, if I use a second construct which is taking int and pass, what is this, 2011? So I'll just pass 2011. So what will happen is once I run this program, main thread will start executing main. So main thread will be bound to 2011. Okay? This is a way to bind a thread, a socket to a thread. See, socket or port. Now tell me, is it a port? Port number? I am running this application on my machine. Automatically, the socket will pick the IP of my machine only. Here, I am creating a socket only. It will pick the IP machine of my IP of the of my machine on which it is running automatically, right? So here I created a server socket. I'll throw an exception. It's throwing an exception, I have an exception. Right? Then I I'll say server Socket server socket is equals to then I want my main thread this thread to listen at that port. If so if you want to make it listen, what you can do server socket dots accept. If you call accept method, this thread which is executing this one will be blocked until some other thread initializes the connection until some other thread connects to this port okay so if i run the program will be blocked let's see i'm running right clicking and run as run on server sorry run as application run as java application hello yep see here it will be in red it will not it didn't stop it is still listening the thread is blocked and it is waiting I can kill it by clicking on. Right. So it, once I run this program, this will be blocked. The thread main thread will be blocked until what time? Until some other thread tries to connect to that port. Okay. Now I have some few basic questions to answer my questions. Uh, let us assume that there is one socket on the server machine, right? I told server socket dot accept. If I call server socket dot accept, that, that thread will be blocked until one another thread connects. So if there is only one socket, if there is only one socket, how many clients can connect to this machine, my, my application? Let's assume one, one client has initiated a connection. One thread has initiated a connection, server socket will accept, that thread will come out. Right? So my main thread will complete once one client connects. So my server application will be able to connect to only one client. So what happens is once I call server socket dot accept, this accept method, what it will do is internally it will create another socket with some random port okay and then return the socket object you will understand what do i mean if once i draw the diagram i will draw the diagram this accept method is returning an object of socket Okay, I'll come to this part and explain what is the uh, even I'll explain in detail what is the what is the actual returning of the socket means after write some few lines of client program. I'll write a few program few lines in another program called client. I'll develop client in parallel. So what I'll do is I'll write a new client. It's taking I'll take main. 
So on the client application, what socket needs to be made? Socket. There are two types of socket. Hello, socket and socket. So here I'll say new socket. See, socket is trying to connect to socket is trying to connect to a server socket. This client socket is trying to connect to a server socket, right? So when you are dialing, whenever you want to connect to another mobile, what to do? You dial a number. So you know where you want to connect to, right? Here also to this socket, we need to tell to which server socket you need to connect to. So we need to pass IP and also the port at which your server is listening, right? So the second number is nothing but the port. Okay, first let me write the second number. What is the port at which my server is listening? 2011. Okay, fine. And first one I said it is an IP. IP cannot be given like a number or a string. It has to be given in the form of an object called INET address. INET address is an object which represents the IP address. Okay. To get the INET address of localhost, very simply, what I'll do is here, see, INET address dot get localhost. It's a very simple thing. INET address is a class and get localhost is a static method which will be returning an object of INET address. What is INET address? INET address is an object which represents the IP. Right? Okay, this is throwing some exception as well. So I created a socket object. Now this socket object knows which IP to connect and which port to connect. Okay, I'll take it in a socket object. Once, see here, first I will run the, uh, I will, I will write system.out.println here, server accepted connection. Server socket had accept, it will wait, it, the, this thread which is executing this line will wait until a connection is accepted. So once it is accepted, I am just finding server accepted connections. So later I will write the convenient, I will write the text messages. Now I will just print server accepted connection. And here I will write system.out.println client connected to server. What will happen if I will, if I run the client first, it will try to connect to this IP and this port. Is my server application running now? No. So it throw an exception. What is it saying? See? Connection refused because nobody is listening at that IP and port. Now what I will do is I will run this server first. If I run. See server mission. Is this printed server accepted connection? No. This main thread is waiting until the connection is accepted. Right? Now I will go to client and then I will run as Java application. See? See here, if I if, if I run this, this is the console for server. Here printed server accepted connection and here client connected. So once client once I ran the client program. Tell me what this line is doing. It is establishing a socket communication. It is establishing a TCP IP communication. Right? This socket object is establishing, right? So now you can assume something like this. This is a client machine. This is a client machine and this is a server machine, right? Socket connection is established now. To write something, what we have? What stream we have for writing bytes? For writing bytes, I don't want to write a file or read, read from file. For writing bytes, what stream? Output stream. Output stream for writing, input stream for reading. Now, from this socket object, if I want to write some bytes, what I can do is I can 
I should get the reference of output stream first, right? To get the reference of output stream, what I do is socket dot get output stream. I will get the reference of output stream through which I can write bytes. Okay. So this is an object of output stream. See, tell me, output stream is abstract class or not? Yes? So I am getting an object of output stream. Can someone create an object of output stream? So what is happening here? Yes. Whenever is I get object of output stream, I am not getting object of output stream because output stream is abstract. Nobody can create an object. Here, whenever I say I am getting a reference of output stream, this method get output stream internally inside that method is creating an object of its subclass, some subclass which you don't know, which you are not bothered about, and returning it. So, superclass reference can point to an object of subclass. That's what I am doing here. Okay. So now I got an output stream. By using output stream, can I write characters or bytes? Bytes. If I want to write characters, what stream should I use? What should I use? Character stream or byte stream? If I want to write characters, I should use character stream. For writing in character stream, what should we use? For writing to file, what we use in character stream? File writer or buffer writer, right? So here also for writing, what I can do is, I can use some writer. So I told you, there are two, there are three types of writers which you understood. File writer, by using which you can write a file. Buffer writer, and also print writer. Which one did I tell you is the best one? Print writer. So I try to create a print writer by using this output stream. Let us see. New print writer. See, there are a lot of constructors. There is one constructor which is taking output stream. Yes, so I can use this print writer which is taking output stream print writer writer to server. See the naming convention also is very important. By seeing this name it tells somebody connection. Oh this writer is writing to server. Naming convention is very important. Okay now what I'll do is I'll write writer to server dot println hello server how are you okay so client is sending this message the text message right but now what happened till now see the picture First line in the client, this line made a socket communication. In this line, I got the reference of output stream through which I can write. But by using output stream, I can write bytes. I want to write characters. So I want a writer. Among writers, we know file writer, which can write a file, buffer writer, which can buffer, print writer. So print writer is best. So I use print writer. And print writer is internally using that same output stream. By using print writer, if I write what it will happen? Whatever I write using print writer will go through this socket, right? It will go to this server. Now server should read. Server should read for reading in input stream. So now see here, server program, what happened? Ser server socket dot accept. Server socket dot accept. On server side, there is one socket. Okay. Server socket dot accept. Uh, forget that this is not returning socket out. Now, what I said is, if I say server socket dot accept, the main thread here, the server thread, will wait until somebody connects. Now, if you assume that there will be only one socket on the server, okay, what will happen? If there is only one socket on the server, what will happen is
by using the server socket only i need to see by using this socket this is server socket right once it accepts connection by using this server socket object i need to get the input stream i can read so when one client is connected this server socket is busy or not until the connection is terminated the server socket is busy so at a particular time the server can talk to how many clients only one so if the purpose of this socket should not be for communicating the purpose of this socket should be only for accepting connections i'll tell an example if you call to your vodafone or airtel call customer care what is the number 1 to 1 okay 1 to 1 let us take for vodafone i think right airtel, airtel okay one, for airtel 1 to 1 if you call what will happen will somebody pick on 1 to 1 number only no no whenever you call to 1 to 1 it will read as a to one of the customer care executive who is free there will be lot of customer care executives whoever is free the call will be forwarded to that customer care executive right suppose let's assume that somebody let's assume this is 1 to 1 to 1 if if i get any call let's assume that i'll start speaking one is 1 to 1 only how many number of customers will be able to connect to 1 to 1 only one so what they did so they kept 1 to 1 only for receiving calls once it receives it will redirect to some other customer care executive right similarly here also this is server server should be for many clients right if this if we start getting input stream for this socket this socket can be used by only one client at a time right but we don't want that in our server applications we want the server to be con we want n number of clients to be connected to same server application right so for that purpose what it will do is what this thread will do is server socket would accept here inside the accept method there is some code it will create another socket and then it will return that socket object so now by using this socket what i can do is i can socket dot get input stream i can get the input stream socket dot get input stream i will be getting a reference of input stream now by using input stream what can i read i can read bytes but i want to read characters if i want to read characters should i use byte stream or character stream character stream in character stream what are for read what class are there for reading readers tell me which is the efficient reader buffered reader so now i'll try to create a buffered reader by using this input stream new buffered reader buffered reader requires a reader there is no buffered reader constructor which is taking input stream when talking about io i told there is one class which will act like a bridge between byte stream and character stream input stream reader when talking about io if you still remember there is a class called input stream reader which will act like a bridge between input stream and character stream to convert bytes to character so now what i'll do is i'll use buffer reader new input stream reader see there is a reader called input stream reader which will take input stream so i can pass is the input stream so i'll just uh, use buffer reader reader from client this will read from client right i'll say reader from client 
dot read line it will read one line from the client string message is equals to message from client is equals to then i'll just print system dot out dot print len client says plus message from client okay i'll just write this after x okay in notes now what i'll do is i'll run the server first Okay, now I'll run the server first. Yeah, if you see here, server program is listening. It is blocked at this line. It is listening for connections. Any client can connect. Now I will run the client. thing is here here i am using print writer is it so we need to flush it because whenever i write something to print writer it will not be flushed immediately we can say print our write the server dot flush it was not flushed there was a problem okay now again i'll run run both client and server See both of them terminated. I think. Now again, I'll run the server. Okay, server is listening. Now again, I'll run the client. Yes, see. This is see. You can see it has terminated server. This output of server dot Java. You can see what is of whose output it is. See terminated after the server. It is output of server. Server accepted connection and it is when the client says hello to hello server hover right and if I want if you want to show here client I am clicking here in this icon client output of client client connected to server right so this is a simple program now tell me my server did it terminate immediately after one client connected one client connected. Said hello server how are you? It terminated. Did server respond? No. So I want the server to respond to the client. And also, server is now getting only one message from the client, right? First, what I want to do is, I want the server to listen continuously until client types by. Until client types by, my server program should not. terminate so what can i do on server tell me see this is a message from the client here i am getting the message from the client until it is by while message from the client dot equals ignore case also i'll say by until client says by not until client does not say by i want it i want to come here and say client says message from the client and then read the next message from the client see what it will do now reader got reader from client dot read line to read one line from the client is client saying by no come and said print it again read next line is client saying by no come and come and said print it like that until client type by my server will be running continuously and also on the client side i what i'll do is here
see here on print writer there is a constructor which is taking output stream right there is a constructor which is taking output stream comma boolean boolean is for auto flush auto flush means whenever is a print ln it should flush immediately if i want everything to be flushed automatically then i can use this constructor which is taking boolean os comma true means auto flush i need not write this line is it so this print writer whatever i write using this print writer will be automatically flushed if i use this constructor so now here what i'll do is hello server how are you something i will write and then finally i'll say bye okay now i will run the client server program okay server is listening client if i run it yeah see server has printed server has accepted collection connection and then it received all the messages sent by the client but now the idea is i'll complete the idea this server program is terminating as soon as it connects to one client now i don't want you to terminate after one client my server getting server should be running continuously right so i want my program to run continuously in an infinite loop see here i will keep this in an infinite loop while while true this will become an infinite loop i will keep everything inside an infinite loop so now what will happen once i run this server program it will wait until one one client connects client connects and here my main thread will be listening for the message from that client only right until one client terminates can it accept a connection from another client until one client connects here one client connects main thread will be executing this lines right it will not main thread will not will be will not come out of this loop inside while i have another while main thread will not come out of this loop until client says bye let's assume that one client has connected it will never say bye so my server can it listen to some other thread no so what i want to do is i want to create a new thread as soon as this connection is established is is uh, as soon as sort of this main server thread uh, accepts a connection i want this main thread to start another thread so that main thread will again become free so the purpose of this main thread we should be always to listen on a new connection right so see here what i will do simply Uh, i am writing a class called server thread extend thread for simplicity quickly i'll complete you are waiting for break extend thread i will write a constructor inside this constructor i'll call start so thread will start if i call if i create an object of it here i'll create a variable called private socket socket and here also i'll make my constructor to take socket socket and i'll say this dot socket is equals to socket and i will override run method inside our thread class 
So inside run, what I'll do is I'll write this code. I'm cutting here and pasting it inside run. These are throwing some exceptions. I'll run it with try catch. Yep, see here. In this run method, what it is doing? It is reading from the input stream. Now see the logic in server. Once it accepts the connection, I'll say new server thread. And I'll pass the socket object. Yep, see now the logic. Once I run this server program, main thread will start. Main thread will be listening for connection. Let's assume client one connects. I'll, this is when it is executed. After this, what I'm doing? I'm printing this and I'm creating a new thread and passing this socket to the thread. So again, it will come to the loop. Again, it will main thread will again execute this. So main thread will be again listening. So what the main thread is doing? It is listening for connections. As soon as it gets a connection. As soon as it gets a connection, it is starting a new thread and passing this up. So if there are 100 clients which are connecting to the server on this port, how many threads are there? 100 threads are created here. Right. But my main thread is again free. Its purpose is only for listening. So the purpose of server socket is only to listen. Once it accepts a connection, what it can do? It can start a new thread. And this thread is having the logic, all the logic for reading from the client, reading the messages from the client, right? So this is called the multi-threaded server. So generally, any server, now even if I say if I start JP also, on that server also, the server logic can accept n number of connections from n number of clients. How is it possible? Because once a server application accepts a connection, it will start a new thread. This is the concept. Okay, you can take a break now. Slowly you can analyze. Maybe it will take some, some time for you to analyze. Analyze the program. Then after we come from the break, we will continue. You can come back by 10.55. So no fine for two days. Okay, 10.55 should be back. <laughs> How much time do you work? 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Every time. Even after lunch. We had a lot of work. You enjoyed it for a few days. There were nothing to spread in. You went to his home to have lunch. What I do? I think I was like, Okay, I was very fast because uh, this, this program was already, similar program was already there. So I wanted to explain concepts in my own way. That's why I typed it.